the covid pandemic has locked down the whole world most industries across the world have come to a grinding halt even in these testing times the pharma industry and the healthcare systems of the world continue to show their mental and physical steel to fight this pandemic the indian pharma landscape is more important than it ever was to the entire 7 billion population of the world the pharma industry backed by a very 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 efficient logistics industry is what is making this world fight back to the covid virus as we slowly move out of the lockdown 3 it is imperative we discuss the learning of the last 50 days and the way forward for an effective supply chain ladies and gentlemen we are highly privileged to have a panel which consists of various stakeholders we have customers or the pharma companies on one side we have the logistics service providers and we are also highly privileged to have mr siva silam who is the former special secretary for logistics ladies and gentlemen uh, let's let's begin uh, our uh, our session for today and i would i would request uh, our customer side to probably start by telling us a few uh, learnings or the challenges that they have encountered during the covid period of the last few days so can i, can I uh, request uh, mr vikram uh, i think he's he's there uh, to to take over and uh, share his views on the last 50 days please so hi everyone good afternoon uh, i hope i am audible to everyone uh, so see i i represent the customer end of this uh, supply chain and being in the pharma industry you know uh, we have had our share of challenges even though we were categorized as a essential service provider but uh, the ground realities were different in terms of you know having uh, availability of uh, freight forwarders having availability of connect our goods uh, in land domestic and of course uh, imports and exports were also uh, heavily impacted so Uh, the last 50 days or so the three lockdown phases that india has been in uh, we as a generic uh, pharmaceutical manufacturer have had a share of you know concerns with respect to a ensuring that we keep operations on and b you know uh, connecting all the critical goods and material to the factory and from the factory to the customers so on both ends uh, we have had uh, tremendous challenges um even though uh, during the first week or 10 days we everything came to a grinding halt and then things started but the on ground realities were uh, still difficult to manage because even though uh, special permissions were given to you know uh, service providers to move their trucks and goods um, drivers were difficult to get we were not getting uh, the drivers the, you know the support staff to ensure the uh, trucks but having said that uh, there was a strong uh, you know support from the industry from the logistics service, logistic service providers um, and we were somehow able to you know uh, bridge the gap we we are in a much better state now um, the availability of uh, you know uh, transporters is much better but we are still facing challenges in terms of air freight availability for exports so that is still uh, one challenge that uh, we have not been able to completely you know overcome so uh, we let me let me just uh, take it on to uh, to you to charge and ask you know you you've just heard uh, vikram speak about the various challenges on the on the raw material side and on the on the finished product uh, side as well so what are what you as a terminal operator have have encountered in in these last 50 days as the most challenging things thank you yash uh, i think so first of all we were not prepared this is an enemy which you don't see you don't have ammunition to kill him and you don't have defense to defend yourself so that was the first surprise if you can Im- imagine on 18th of march uh, we said we, there will be likely lockdown if we didn't know we didn't have even time to prepare uh, what we do what what we have to do and how we have to do and uh, you know i share uh, uh, vikram's concern what he said because imagine pharmaceuticals were manufactured but there was no packing material because packing material was not part of essential service so then the, you know you saw a lot of amendments coming from the circular from the government i believe it has gone to something like all india pages about 
2,800 circulars have been issued by various governments in uh, just last 30, 40, 50 days. So that that's the level of improvisation happened. And I call it as an improvisation rather than thinking that it was confused state. Where nobody knew, knew what to do. We had first day, I had only 10 person people working, right? And we had part of essential service. Pharma had to move. It had to go and I had to bring people. Now people were really troubled because there was an announcement from none other than Prime Minister that draw Lakshman Rekha, Jaan hai to Jahan hai. And everybody, you know, I was calling every worker family. They would say, Mr. Jani, would you send your son? Would you send your child? But to my good luck, I had four women who were coming to work every day. And I used them as a, as a sort of an ambassador and told all those guys, I said, these four women can come. Why can't you come? And slowly we ramp up to 20, 25, 30 percent. OK, so that's one challenge what we had. Big part of engineering because temperature has to be maintained, standard has to be maintained. There was another problem of uh, having engineering staff. So we made engineering people to stay there with us. And what we did to have people stay with us, we we give the incentive to people who are coming. We put up a bus service. We went immediately into the police department, took permission, and we are still running a bus of 150 kilometers. We are picking up people from their home to bring to the work. So at least they come. So we have about 18 buses running today to pick up people from their home. We were to keep you know social distance and all. We gave them incentive, cash incentive every day they were coming. The foods were made. And of course, it was all done with the protocol of keeping physical distance and other stuff and all which we learn. But I think so. The good part is in this whole COVID thing, I give a lot of credit to pharma manufacturer. They have kept things, the light burning, you know. They were the Statue of Liberties with light up and light burning and the material still coming in. Even till today, we get roughly about 200 tons cargo every day. And credit to also to those truck operators, especially like, uh, you know, uh, Shakti or whatever those cold chain truck operators. They kept on managing Shital Parivar. I mean, they had, they, the trucks were left by the drivers. They were taking cars, taking another drivers and bringing trucks to the terminal. And what we did, we were trying to turn around truck faster so they can take the truck back to their uh, factory and bring it back. I think so. it was a big effort. And uh, I always say it from the beginning, uh, my problem is not my problem. My problem is your problem. And your problem is my problem. I think that's the approach the whole fraternity took it. And we just said one mantra, survival and revival. So we are still on a survival mode. We have people are coming. We have reached about 40% now of people. Still people are not coming. They're still scared. The whole thing, the scare, see, the, the fear factor is so high in people's mind. They don't want to get out. You see COVID cases. You see Mumbai getting these and all those stuff. But I must say, out of Mumbai, as I said, 200 tons. Out of Ahmedabad, we're able to move about 70 to 80 tons every day. And again, I give credit to the pharma manufacturer, the transporter, and of course, the airline to come quickly to turn into the, the passenger aircraft into the upliftment. Now, what we have to learn, this is what has happened. I think so in future, what we have to learn how are you going to operate? What are going to the standard? What we need to do where the pharma is still get that standard because it's a, it's a product which needs a lot of standards. So without giving up standards, without giving up the health uh, protocols, how are we going to build the whole supply chain? And that's what we have to learn. And next, I would say fortnight, moment the lockdown opens and we all have to sit and work together. But it was a great learning. It has learned to be independent. It has learned to be self-reliance. It has learned to be 
comradeship? Are we hold each other and hold each other's hand? I tell you, uh, uh, Vikram, you know, there were importers, uh, pharma importers, they could not contact their uh, uh, CBs, CHAs, because CHAs were locked down. So we pulled up the document, right. we became CHA, we became custom, we helped them. You know, Wokart had a consignment of 26 crore value lying in that temperature control. And, you know, they were in tears. So we pulled every report, and I must say, the custom department came in a fantastic upfront to, to, to work towards it. And of course, uh, you know, uh, special secretary's uh, logistic branch, uh, every problem you take it, they had a solution. Uh, Mr. Swasalam was working almost like 20 hours a day, calling people, holding this. So all this work, the custom, the logistic department, the finance ministry, the civil aviation ministry, if we had a problem getting permission, some flights to land down. You know, we we woke up DGC at midnight to allow flight to come in. So a lot of back office work happened. And uh, I think so if we can, my only suggestion, uh, sir, Siva Salam, sir, and to all of us, we should note down what we have done and build a case study. So in future, it happens how we need to come up, what we need to do. And that's where I will leave... Uh, at this point of time, uh, yes, for others to speak. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dusharji. Thank you so much for setting the context uh, by a very detailed explanation, right from the people mindset into the other challenges that you encountered with, with flight operations and the ground operations. Uh, it's, it's good to hear uh, that you are uh, positive that, you know, it's ultimately the collaboration. Uh, I would like to bring in uh, Mr. Silva Silam here because it's important to understand how the government thought in this 50 days and of course nobody was prepared for it so Tushaji, the point is there and nobody was prepared and nobody expected anything like this because nothing like an app a pandemic like this has hit the world in the last hundred years so uh, so let me hear the uh, views of mr silva Salam, uh, to tell us what are the major learnings of the last 50 days uh, uh... First of all, uh, uh, am I audible? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, okay. Um, let me start by uh, um, uh, thanking um, Aditya um, uh, and Logistics Insider, um, uh, Yash, Gaurav, um, uh, Tushar, um, uh, Bhattacharya, Vipin, uh, for having me here and uh, uh, reminding me every day that I have a date with all of you. Um, um, and let me tell you, I have been looking forward to speaking to you because this is one of, if at all, there has been a success story or a reasonable success story with all its problems. I would still say that it was pharma um, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the logistics uh, relating to pharma. With all the problems, we were all first of the blocks um, in, in respect of uh, uh, several other facilitative work which uh, happened. Uh, the first thing, what uh, what is new to this country? was uh, pharma was the first groups which were ever formed for facilitation and uh, the groups which started off i think tushar was there in our first phd group Vipin was there and we started off immediately after uh, um, i think the talk was on 27th if i'm not mistaken and immediately after this the phd group uh, all the several members are also part of it then they started then they, uh, and uh, on an advisory they just started uh, I, I i never knew that it was going to be such a success but the group was formed within 15 minutes of the end of the seminar and after that it simply picked up like anything today i am told it has more than 500 members and uh, the facilitation is something uh, wonderful so what it has first done is that it has told that in collectivism there is a lot of strength uh, markets being what they are and let them be let them be in, uh, in its own plane but what I would call cooperative competition is something which is here to stay everybody has seen the benefit of cooperative competition several people who otherwise compete in the market actually coordinated for logistics I mean, logistics is not the place where they are competing. And that's, that is a major thing and a policy 
uh, view which I think each one of you need to take forward and uh, try to organize um, uh, looking um, uh, as we as we unravel what I would call, call the COVID 4.0 uh, opening up. Um, I'm not going the way of what practically it has been done. That is uh, more a matter of um, people like you who actually handle. But I can tell you at the policy level, uh, the whole idea um, is to kickstart businesses, not just uh, at this stage, I can tell you, it's not just pharma businesses, but all other businesses um, as well, because it has been realized that a whole lot of industry is dependent on each other. I mean, it's not that pharma industry is a, is a self-contained industry and doesn't require another thing. An anecdotal and a very, very simple point was drawn home by Tushar when he said that I started the pharma and suddenly find I had no packaging material. And it took us, uh, I know, I worked, we all worked on it, and it took us almost a week to get the packaging industry started and getting them as part and uh, as affiliated units. So these are some important learning lessons going forward. But I would like to look at you know, certain aspects which Vikram also raised and the strategic implication of that. One thing which we never knew before COVID was how important India is to the world as far as pharma is concerned. This is a matter which each one of you need to realize and we need to deliver it to the world. It's not trying to prove uh, that we are so important. It, the importance can vanish overnight. But the fact of remaining relevant is what is should be the way forward. And uh, uh, India's, uh, this COVID-19 has told, has brought to very uh, stark notice not I, I i know industry people might have uh, already known it this is an important thing and i would like to flag it for our uh, uh, pharma manufacturers and also policy makers including logistics the second thing which i would like to uh, bring to your notice uh, uh, apart from other things in later intervention is making use of certain um, uh, the it tools and uh, your 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 high value the logistics may include air, but there is also a last mile, uh, first mile, which cannot be left to uh, um, uh, later determination and it should be integrated. Several um, stalwarts are already there. Terminal operators are there. I see Vipin also. I think this is a matter which first, when it is addressed in logistics, it's the lowest hanging fruit, which we should do it quickly. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Silva Silam, for a very detailed uh, description of uh, the pharmaceutical industry and how the groups were formed right up front when the first lockdown happened on the 27th of March itself. And you're very right. It's very imperative that the relevance of pharmaceutical remains right in the forefront of whatever we are doing today. You also spoke about the cooperative competition. I actually love the word. It, it's a very beautiful phrase that uh, how the cooperative competition can exist along with making sure that this pandemic is well well taken care and handled. I will move over to the service providers, uh, especially on the logistics side. Let me hear uh, Mr. Vora. There was a complete uh, jam, you know, all over, you know, at the airports, there was no flight going, no staff coming. But I think uh, after one week or so, as Mr. Shiva Salam has so, you know, told that there were committees which were formed and finally it was a, you know, pharma goods which started coming, imports as well as little bit of exports. But with the cooperation of everyone, you know, the terminal operators, the government, you know, wherever we had problems, whether it was from the transporters to bring the cargo to the airport or to take deliveries from the airport, we all came together and I think everybody, when they work together, we reached to some conclusion and the goods started moving to and from the airports, you know. The stuff started moving, the trucks started moving. And I tell you, even among ourselves as the freight forwarders, we all came together. You know, if one of us was having problem at some place, they were talking to other people and trying to solve the issues, not only for our own business, but even if the shipper is facing any problem you know if he doesn't got the bill of lading or the bill of lading is stuck at that uh, at the courier courier things we all came out and we approached mr shiva salam and said sir this is a problem and i must tell you that even at 10 o'clock in the night he used to call these companies and you know make sure that these things are done so it's a joint efforts which which were you know done and everything started moving smoothly and today after one month i think 
as uh, Tushar said, 40% things have started moving, you know, from the airports, whether it's imports or exports. It's all the joint efforts of everyone, not only by the freight forwarders, but even the shippers cooperated, the terminal operators cooperated, the transporters cooperated, the government cooperated, and everyone in the supply chain, you know, they cooperated and they all came together, not thinking that we are competing with each other or we have to, you know, we are competitors. We are all worked like a like a true logistic providers. And that really helped in bringing what we are doing today. And I think the way forward, the way the things are going, we have to start doing more and more cooperation among each other, you know, start doing the jobs together, and we'll all succeed in this. That's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Uh, let's move over to Satish. Satish, uh, can, let's, let's hear you out. You've been very actively involved with a lot of movement of, uh, of goods, and especially on the pharmaceuticals, you've been actively involved everywhere. So how, how do you see a freight forwarder's role, uh, especially in terms of the capacity optimization or there has been a huge challenge in terms of capacity availability. So how have, how in the last year have you seen the freight forwarders uh, meet up to that challenge uh, to be able to make sure that the, uh, the finished products are able to go uh, reach out to the affected people around the world? What we did was we created more of hub and scopes to get into the nearest and available hubs. And then from further from that, we managed to connect through our offices. So that's how we managed the capacity initially. But as days progressed, we then went back to our original model. We also did a few charters to some uh, key sectors where, you know, we had sufficient traffic to uh, optimize. Uh, but certain routes, we still struggle. So this is what we did as an organization. Great. Thank you, Satish. Uh, yeah, me being a freight forwarder as well. So just to add that, I think freight forwarders are very, very fast and very agile on, on uh, coming out with fresh solutions, looking at the challenge. Freight forwarders really adapted really, really fast. And and mobilize their whatever available resources were to bridge the gap between the customer and the uh, actual consumer. I think uh, many freight forwarders even went ahead and created additional capacity through by means of bringing in charter operations. You can see Aditya back on uh, online and, and Aditya, if you could hear us. So we have Aditya Shah here. Uh, would like to hear your perspective on the first and the last mile uh, operation on, on in the last 50 days for you. Yeah, I'm, I firstly apologize for the time, uh, you know, wasted because of, I think, probably poor internet uh, at my end. Am I audible now? Am I very clear? Yeah. Okay, great. So, yeah, I think, uh, uh, see, we come from a background of, uh, you know, LTL cargo as well as Express cargo, largely, our group, uh, which is VTrans and we Express put together. Now, um, I think the large part of uh, the first mile, last mile, uh, you know, was uh, stuck up uh, till almost the April uh, end. Uh, it was after a lot of effort and, uh, you know, discussions, a lot of support from uh, associations as well as, uh, you know, government uh, clarity uh, that we were able to get, uh, you know, permissions uh, for at least our hub centers, which were, you know, we have 40 odd hub centers. So we tried to manage the first mile, last mile uh, show from then. Uh, uh, you know, still uh, uh, almost uh, uh, 20 odd percent of our branches uh, remain in containment zones where we are not able to operate. But at the same time, the operation, uh, you know, uh, for us as well as I think to a large part, the PTL or Express uh, segment would have uh, been operationalized. Um, there would be limited uh, 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 challenges. Uh, I mean, there would be limited uh, scope uh, when it comes to the serviceability, but uh, I think uh, over a period of time, it is definitely increasing the number of pin codes, the serviceability. And, uh, but yes, it's, it's difficult to say whether it will remain the same. There are different pockets where, uh, you know, the situation changes in a matter of a few days, and hence we have to rejig our uh, operations. So that becomes a little bit of a challenge, but uh, nonetheless, I think. Uh, that will remain uh, for some uh, time being. Uh, there won't be a straight answer that uh, you know these cities, these centers will remain operational, whether it is the first mile, last mile, for the next one month. It all depends on how uh, how this virus uh, you know pans out at these places. Thank you, thank you, Ditya. I would like to now move this discussion ahead to the next stage. Hopefully on the 17th of May, we will get into the next phase and uh, a lot more of the economy will be opened up and we'll have least possible lockdown. Uh, I think the next stage which is coming up is going to be extremely important for the pharmaceutical industry with the, the other industries now beginning to open up. 
how do we see the forecasted capacity challenges which are going to come in as the other industries and their finished products will probably compete for the already challenged low capacity air capacity available around the world we all know about 80% of the global uh, cargo by air moves on passenger belly bellies so how do we see uh, with uh, probably the next 3 to 5 months not many passenger aircrafts would be operational due to and what is your take on the capacities going forward so i will open this to a freight forwarder first because i think they 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 i'm sure are well better prepared so satish uh, let me ask you uh, how do you uh, how are you preparing for the pharmaceutical industry to be able to uh, get them adequate capacities to okay i think what we've been doing is that if you look at it initially we did not have the passenger uh, freighters being coming into the country as much as the dependence was very heavy on the uh, scheduled freighters but as you can see today that uh, after the demand has been clearly shown to the airlines the airlines have realized that uh, the passenger belly which used to be utilized can also be utilized for cargo and we saw more and more uh, airlines coming forward we also saw that uh, on our request some of the airlines like say aeroflot uzbek also bought in a little more additional capacity at uh, our our request. request into certain cities and markets so i think whole and all if you look at it today to the demand and supply we've seen that uh, there is more visibility now we've seen more airlines giving more uh, new schedules coming in so we seeing an improvement constantly we've also seen that the prices which were at a peak have slowly started to taper down a little and uh, things are improving Uh, thanks Satish for this uh, for this comment and i really hope that the capacity continues to grow and obviously the the prices uh, for moving of the goods are also uh, uh, brought down because obviously not all products can move at uh, the current prevalent prices uh, tushar ji i'm sure you are seeing a lot of uh, action on the on the aircraft side with you know your your terminals are receiving various aircrafts around the country how do you see the current capacity versus what the capacity of the near future is going to be and how that will be able to create space enough for the pharmaceutical industries to move the goods i believe in short span you will have the rate going up because china is still in demand and i don't want to quote the number everybody knows number what is the freight rate going out of china if i have an aircraft and if i can get that kind of rate why would i have sent it to india i have sent it to china china is still dumping the goods still the world is buying the uh, ppes and covid materials still around the world and china i can just tell you shanghai airport has 4 km long trucking waiting line in shanghai terminal at pvg there are 4 km long they have now opened up two more facility to have, you know uh, to accept the cargo so that huge is the demand out of china now that would take taper i believe next 2 to 3 months and during these 2 3 months your rates will be firmed up it won't go down in india more foreign carriers now especially european carriers which were not bringing earlier will bring these passenger uh, your know, freight flights because slowly they will open up their more fleets currently just to give you lufthansa has got two freighters out of pvg at daily and eight passenger flights out of them daily out of china now naturally they'll put in more and more aircraft coming into the, the indian way so you will see the rate uh, pumped up in my mind the rate will remain up moment the lockdown open you will see export of other items will go up the manufacturing will start and the items which are in pipeline will go up but your import will go down because whatever the import you are seeing today which were in the pipeline so import will go down and export will go up i believe next three months the the rates will still firm up it won't go down maybe marginally here there depending on the capacity but the import rates will go down if you have a import you will get a better rate but on export your rate will firm up 
and it will remain that way. I just want to bring one element here. And, uh, you know, uh, some of you knows uh, who are part of the government group, my take on Air India. Air India is the only your lifeline if you want to survive in this industry. Take it from me. With 26 wide body aircraft, Air India can make that magic to all of us. And Maharaj has just woke up. You've seen with this relief flight, they're taking cargo outward full, they're bringing cargo inward full. Mark my words, if I was a forwarder, I would forge my partnership with Air India right now. In coming months, all these foreign airlines will be reluctant to bring their aircraft because there are no passengers. You also said uh, you have 70 to 80 percent come from passenger belly. Am I not? Hello? Yes, 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 Tushaji, so you can continue. 70 to 80 percent capacity you said goes into the belly because I'm on a very interesting point. What I'm trying to say is with 26 wide body aircraft, Air India will fly 22 flights every day around the world. Now, Air India just have to have two hubs in Europe, one up in London, two hubs in US, one up in Singapore, one up in Hong Kong, and one up in China, maybe one in South Africa. They've given you the reach around the world. And Air India can carry roughly about 250 to 400 tons of cargo out of India every day. And that's the capacity you will have it. So my request all of you and my suggestion, it is time to support Maharaja. It is time to be part of with Maharaja. Remember in between that, that sun as a, as a symbol. And if Maharaja plays the things right, you will need Maharaja in time to come for next 15 months. So I would urge government to wake up, grab this opportunity, put this capacity and run it. And all of us has to support Air India because it's it's like, you know, uh, Mr. Swarsum said like, it's no more competition. It's a comradeship. We have to hold each other's hand. And if they can fly that 26 wide body aircraft effectively, they will be your lifeline. Take it from me. Directly point to point. See, in Europe, you reach one place. In one day, you are reached to the whole Europe. Next 24 hours, you reach everywhere by trucking. In, in Same thing in, in U.S. You go East Coast, you go Chicago, and you go West Coast. You cover everything. So I think it's time that Air India wake up. And I would urge all of us to, because it's our airline, it's our money, it's taxpayers' money, it is our own government airline. Let's we make a demand from government that they should book into all this, uh, use these 26 wide body aircraft every day. We'll need for passenger. We'll need our children to go for study. You know, today Air India is offering you return. If you bring your 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 son or daughter from abroad, they're offering return flight back to the destination for their education. That's the power Air India has. So I think if we have to work with Air India to enhance this capacity. Thank you, Tusharji. Point well taken. Air India is going to sit right in the forefront as per you for movement of goods around uh, the next 15 months. Uh, since Air India is a national carrier, I would uh, I would request Mr. Silva Salam to uh, kindly mm -hmm. share his opinion as to what kind of a role do they see Air India play? You, uh, Tusharji just mentioned about 26 wide body aircrafts that they are currently with. So how are they going to ensure that they're going to make uh, 26 aircrafts remain in the air for the maximum period of time so that the best possible available capacity is availed or uh, made available to the customers around the world. Mr. Silva uh, uh, Let me tell you that I share uh, Tusharji's passionate advocacy of Air India and Air India services. It's, it's, a, it's a thing and uh, um, I have always held that view and I'm happy that it has been articulated uh, by the trade. I also held a similar view with regard, to, I also hold a similar view with regard to our national telecom carriers, namely the BSNL um, in most places and Delhi and Mumbai being MTNL, an extreme, which frankly speaking in a telecom setup, I would consider this to be a national carrier. Um, uh, I'm with you because they help 
um, um, in times like these and they help to create um, the market and they help to uh, come, uh, regulate the market uh, through the market mechanism itself. So I'm, I'm, I'm fully with Tushar Ji on this, uh, on this strategic imperative, Absolutely. if I would not, if I can term it like that. The issue is um, um, Air India, as we all know, is having problems of cash flows. Uh, it's not a problem of assets. It's a problem of um, uh, money. I mean, a lot of us may be asset rich, but we may not have the money to uh, use. So the whole, if you look at it, Air India as a, uh, if you want to take forward you know, on the on the on the um, uh, strategic uh, alternative, which Tushar has mentioned, I think we should look at air india and look as to how we can address this cash flows and this is where uh, people like uh, our freight forwarders uh, and our freight forwarders as a community um, um, need to come uh, forward if you are able to book those spaces and uh, not only here but also in your in 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 the foreign shows that here is a flight and here is the um, 80 tons or 100 tons uh, I mean, that's a, that's a freighter, but for a, a passenger aircraft, maybe 20 tons or 30 tons. And if, if LCL cargo operators, uh, Vipinji, uh, yeah. big operator, um, uh, WeTrans, uh, and people like that would be in a position to tell them that I am I'm willing to buy the cargo up front. Here is the you can actually get it at cost, uh, at near cost, maybe with a small margin uh, for Air India's operation. The fact that, that we do not, we, um, if, if we join together and tell them, okay, here, here are 20 of us and we are buying 20 tons. We are buying those 18 tons uh, onwards and reverse. Airline operators can also um, um, help not only Air India, if you are able to do this to Sharji, not only Air India, we can also get uh, SpiceJet on board. We can get Indigo on board because they also have a problem of cash flows, uh, not the assets. Assets are available. But how are we going to use that in generate cash is the issue. Um, because once, they, as we all know, that once an aircraft is scheduled, the cost is booked. And uh, um, um, you, we cannot say that we will agree to take the cargo and we find that we have only two tons and that the car flight will not move. So it's very imperative for us to help Air India create the business because the business is with us. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, the, I would, I would uh, uh, say that uh, um, in conclusion, I would say Tushar's views needs to be taken seriously. Um, it's a way forward. It's a way forward to create an India, um, um, an India stack and an India business, and um, uh, uh, so that we are also available. Uh, to play our part on the international skies, um, uh, help you work out the uh, economics so that Air India um, um, also benefits. Uh, if not, if not uh, a big, this, if not in a very big way, but at least they should not go underground um, uh, in the sense of uh, suffering a loss because that will uh, uh, drain their assets as well. That will that will come to play on their assets. But uh, but ultimately. Um, Wonderful uh, uh, idea to take it forward to Shah. Sir, sir, Air India, I yes, can I go off, sir. Take it from me. If we start turning money in the in the Bank of Air India, the valuation will go jump. Yash, can uh, I say something? Yeah, please, Vipinji, go ahead. Yeah, you know, just what uh, Mr. Uh, Tushar Jani has said and Mr. Sivas Elam has said, you know, Air India is the only answer. Let me tell you, you know, Tushar and I are, you know, in some other group also, and we have been trying our best to make sure that Air India starts flying, you know, everywhere. And we have been doing this from the last two, three weeks. Unfortunately, they are not coming forward uh, with, they have their own uh, problems like uh, cash, uh, cash issues, and they don't have money to pay even the fuel and the salaries. But if India wants to be, you know, transit hub, also, this is the right time. For in India, because it's the you know cargo coming from uh, you know Europe and US can go to Far East via India, or cargo coming from Far East to India and then going to Europe. This is the best time to prove that India can be a biggest hub for in this region also. So Air India has to take the lead to make India as a as a hub, Bombay, Delhi to start with, and other stations later on. So this is the right time for Air India to make this as a hub also. 
that's what i wanted to say uh you're very right uh, sir what i would just like to uh, add here uh, mr silva silam you want to say something uh well, one small point since we are in this theme um and um uh tushar and vipin uh, mentioned about the uh, air india issue thing um in the uh, uh, uh in the uh, in the within the country logistics and for movement um, uh, uh, across india uh, there is also a new thing which the railways have come which has actually taken shape during the last uh, 40 days and that's uh, better use of the slrs as parcel vans i would strongly advise my uh, colleagues uh, freight forwarder colleagues uh, in the uh, group um, not just to look at export import as a the, as a uh, oh, look at it but also look at it from the pharma okay. logistics point of view pharmaceutical companies if all if you could have somebody to um, uh, take one slr and uh, of of any uh, of any train i'm not telling passenger train i'm talking of express mail including it is possible for pharma logistics to reach each and every um, uh, um, a large number of pin codes and large number of stations it can also be operated cooperatively because uh, the uh, all what you are taking in that is space and uh, every uh, every company can take a space and if somebody is not doing it somebody else can use it and they are all uh, and uh, it, it it has to be run on a on a way similar to lcl uh, cargo accumulation i think aditya um, is an uh, uh, group is an aditya is an expert in this maybe he will he and his um, and others who are tuned in will look into it uh, because it is better to get into the parcel van logistics now willing to facilitate because this was one of the last uh, uh, issues which uh, my own minister when I, on my farewell uh, did mention and said that this is a view which he will take it uh, forward to much greater heights and uh, and that he was grateful for to me for having sounded this but willing to help a lot of people in the railways are willing to help and this is one area uh, and we can convert one of the slrs in those trains for a period of 5 years and use it as uh, um, uh, yeah, and provide for the cold chain as well which is so vital uh, in a in pharma logistics um, and we could do that because in a train it's possible to have continuous uh, uh, maintenance of the uh, uh, of the uh, temperature because it is well powered and then uh, we could also check it at every station where it stops and we are by uh, wherever it stops so that we have our um, um, we have our groups to uh, do that take it at intermediate stations put more cargo if at all it is possible and then take things forward wonderful idea that you just mentioned about the slrs being booked what i would like to talk about the couple of aspects that uh, the speakers just spoke about uh, one was on the cost front uh, how the cash flows need to continue running so obviously everybody in the chain uh, needs to play their respective roles into ensuring that the cash flows flow so that everybody in the system is able to actually uh, transact and make sure that the entire supply chain moves seamlessly number 1 number 2 uh, we spoke about creating capacity uh, so uh, the role of air india or spice jet or uh, blue dart or the other indian carriers apart from the other european middle east and the other carriers of the world freight forwarders like i just mentioned have been creating capacities uh, my my organization has has operated eight charters in the last 3 uh, weeks and uh, i i feel what you mentioned mr silva silam about cooperative competition is is something that can be built around and and if there's a collaboration done by the terminals the airports the government the freight forwarders to in, to put in the relevant capacities for export of goods and import of goods it could be a game changer for the indian pharmaceutical industry especially till the time the Uh, scheduled airlines are able to take over uh, moving on to now the the road side i think it's a brilliant idea what uh, mr silva silam has mentioned about the slrs being taken over uh, i will leave it to aditya for a few minutes because uh, mr silva silam mentioned he is the subject matter expert that we have here so let's hear him out how could this be uh, a game changer on the land side for facilitation of pharmaceutical goods aditya over to you yeah great in fact uh, in fact uh, you won't believe uh, in the last one week we've spent a good amount of time internally uh, you know discussing and debating about the subject with our team uh, 
Uh, see, today we are heavily reliant on the road. I mean, if we talk about our group and overall logistics in the country, we are, uh, you know, uh, moving a lot of cargo on the road. And uh, uh, railways was, uh, you know, uh, there, but, uh, you know, we never took it properly, uh, you know, to the, uh, considering, considering the potential, we never took it that way, uh, you know, that we could really build it. But in this scenario, where uh, uh, ultimately there are challenges uh, on the roadside, uh, uh, you know, in terms of reaching uh, the transit times. So what is essential, essence is basically the collaboration with the railway will at least take care of the transit uh, part of it, where, you know, somewhere the... Uh, uh, the road or the surface uh, industry, you know, would face a challenge uh, because of obviously, you know, reasons of consolidation and, uh, you know, hub and spoke uh, movement. So definitely, I think a collaborative approach is something which we are already, uh, you know, considering. And uh, I think that that is the future. Uh, you know, not all parts of the country will be ever, you know, kitni gadiya so chala There is, you know, internally we are saying how many kilometers uh, will we be able to, you know. Uh, uh, run the trucks, uh, you know, and uh, how much will that efficiency be for the country and for the nation when it comes to logistics. So it's imperative that, uh, uh, you know, uh, road plus rail combination, and it makes a lot of sense for pharma because of the tight uh, 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 availability or, you know, over the distances of more than 500 or 700 kilometers, it makes great sense uh, uh, to, uh, you know, uh, make a multimodal kind of an approach. Obviously, the first mile, last mile will always remain uh, uh, with the road, but the middle lane uh, will definitely be something where uh, uh, railways uh, has a great, uh, you know, uh, uh, great uh, uh, infra which will be able to uh, cater to it. I only wish uh, there were, uh, you know, more uh, uh, some sort of private players also who could, you know, strengthen or increase the, uh, uh, you know, uh, availability across geographies. I think sometimes. Uh, uh, you know, in some far eastern parts, uh, there become it becomes a challenge sometimes to you know match the uh, road. Uh, if uh, there could be more penetration, which uh, you know some other uh, players can also bring in, um, apart from just a few of the guys who are there operating, uh, it could really help uh, uh, to do it. But definitely, I think it's the way forward. Um, we are already as a group uh, seriously looking at uh, collaborating on uh, uh, this part and. Uh, it will make a lot of sense for FG, for sure. No, I'm, not, I'm not too sure on the raw material side of it, but for the FG movement, I, I think it will definitely make a lot of sense. So my, my question was, Aditya, that are you already able to book the SLRs? Have you managed to do a few of these moves already? And the other stakeholders have done these moves? Uh, no, not much. We've moved very, very small part uh, as of now. We had a full-fledged vertical earlier, uh, but we've... Uh, We've not uh, really operated on it on a larger scale, but this time it has made us imperative that it will have to be operated. So we are in an initial stage, I would say, not uh, not to the team that I can give you know, a large example of it. Okay, noted. Uh, Tushaji wants to say something. So Tushaji? Uh, just to say in the past, uh, Gati and all tried that. And for some reason, it didn't work. So I don't want to dwell much on that. But I want to pick up uh, Vikram's brain. In the domestic pharma distribution, Government is bringing certain new guidelines, which means most of the domestic, right or wrong, I don't know. The domestic pharma doesn't go through the uh, the controlled temperature environment, but ultimately it will come in the domestic. Since we are talking pharma new vista, there is going to be a huge new opportunity to move domestic pharma in a cold chain environment. In a, in a storage in cold and moon cold. And I think so we should ask Vikram whether in domestic uh, is something has come. I've seen the government draft guideline. I don't know whether it's going to be implemented in current situation, but it will come and that will open up the whole new pharma distribution opportunity for logistic player uh, in the domestic. Uh, thank you, Tushaji. Let's let's hear Vikram out of what uh, point uh, Tushaji just mentioned on the domestic side. How do you I see? Mean, there, there has been some some notification going around, but but the thing is, see, I mean, in for generic drugs, uh, when it comes to pharmaceutical generic drugs, uh, oral solids, we are talking about a temperature requirement of fifteen to twenty five, you know, and that primarily you know cuts off the cold chain requirement per se. I mean, if you're not talking about Speciality vaccines, uh, which need you know two to eight or below 
uh, sub zero temperature requirement where the cold chain integrity has to be maintained to ensure the drug efficient uh, efficacy and efficiency is not compromised so i am not really sure how this new guidance is going to impact um, you know uh, domestic supply chain but yes a very interesting point that was made uh, by another panel member with respect to rail uh, rail freight that is something you know we as a company has also uh, already started looking at the only concern that we see is how do we uh, ensure uh, you know uh, there's no pilferage how do we ensure pharma goods are you know segregated and kept uh, properly when when they are transiting uh, in rail uh, and that is the concern that we as an industry you know uh, as a company we, we are facing right now okay uh, so yeah so i was i what i was just saying is that uh, how about building a green corridor between the manufacturer and the and the actual affected in the post covid situation just immediately as we cross over from the 17th so what would be your wish list in terms of specialty on the movement of the vaccines for covid or for otherwise what would be your suggestive a very quick minute i would request all of you to just put something which which could fast track the movement of goods from the manufacturer to the end consumer uh, kind of creating a green corridor uh, for the sir salam sir you wanted to make a point uh, uh, i was i was just uh, trying to clarify now uh, what uh, uh, the the issue which uh, vikram uh, raised about the pilferage uh, issue i mean um, vikram uh, you are considering it as a railway parcel i am not entering the parcel uh, yard at all i am straight away entering the slr and slr and not of ordinary trains like passenger train which may take endless uh, time i am talking of slrs which are situated at the end of each next to the um, one at the last and uh, which with which the guard may be there and another one next to the uh, engine uh, in the first thing and, the, and i'm talking of those slrs and those slrs need to be operated by uh, trained professionals the those slrs can also be uh, a part of a cold chain the if you if if we are going to use it let us say i can only give you anecdote let us say big areas uh, i do not know about pharma movement let us say delhi to chennai and you are having uh, arasdani and similarly you are talking of delhi to bangalore or delhi to hyderabad or any other place when you are you are talking of those trains and it is possible to have those slrs which are having cold chains you can if if the, um, and build it into it the second thing is that the freight forwarder ensures that suppose you want to get some of these stuff off at bank at bopal he will just drop it there so it is it is a business opportunity which i am talking about i am not telling that you are going to book your you know, book your consignment as a parcel i am talking of it as if it's cared for by the freight forwarder it's a freight forwarder suppose you want to land it into an intermediate train intermediate location you can do it so and then start the distribution so uh, um and this is the first step according to me to start uh, um, uh, um uh, a vaccine distribution uh, system as well because once you have the cold chain you can give it at thousands and thousands of locations and then Absolutely. use for last mile movement uh, to move because in a in a in a when we are talking about vaccine movement what is uh, actually the long distance movement is a simpler affair it is easy okay. for transport a vaccine from delhi to chennai airport but the problem comes after that so the last mile connectivity is important and therefore if you are able to use rail you can go into much more interiors and then have a smaller uh, uh, manage so that's what i was coming for and uh, uh, it's a thing which uh, pharma should according to me lead you always have you will always have material uh, for uh, half an slr there is no doubt about it and if all of you join i think that's the way we can we can take it forward and that's what i was trying to suggest to you uh, great, great. i know i know vikram um, uh, we need to work out the details along with each one of you and all of you should participate in it and that's the way we can move forward and therefore every pharma has ma as a market in every um, in every address so we are talking about how you might be you might be ipca laboratory and there might be another one there might be uh, sipla i mean there yeah, you're not um, your manufacturing you some of you may overlap 
but there are a lot of other products which need to go there. So all of you can actually participate and take it forward. That's what I was trying to say. And the next Very stage, the last mile, uh, which is particularly important, whatever efficiencies we do in these, we, we tend to lose it in the last mile. And uh, that's maybe the next stage at which uh, I will allow Yash to introduce it. And uh, if at all we are addressing it, we will take it forward because there are other experts available to address this issue up front. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sivasalam. Uh, Very interesting, sir. I mean, uh, this, this really is... Uh, uh, if the SLR thing really works, it will really help because just just to share a you know real case example, we we were trying to move some goods from Indore to to Sikkim, and we were facing challenges in connecting on road. It was taking as as high as uh, eight to ten days, and we we did float some few inquiries. So uh, what I would what I would like to mention, uh, I'll just take this cue forward, this uh, thing forward. Uh, it's very interesting to what uh, Vikram has found out about movement from Sikkim to Indore and using railways as a possible substitute medium to just road. Uh, like I mentioned, I would like to get a quick comment from all of you uh, before we take the question and answers from the audience uh, of what would be your wish list to make a green corridor which could fast track things to make sure that the vaccine, the critical vaccine, COVID or otherwise, would move from a manufacturer to an end consumer. So let me let me start with uh, Vipinji. Uh, uh, please, uh, if you could give me your one wish list uh, of making a green corridor. See, basically, what we require is more uh, cool chain trucks and all those things which are not available right now in a big quantity. You know, right now the uh, the trucks cool chain uh, facilities have to be provided near the airports and everywhere. You know, even the warehouses they are in short supply. So all those things needs to be looked at before we, you know, go further. Now, one more suggestion which I want to give here to the, uh, you know, pharmaceutical industry, which of course is not covered in this, is to see on the packaging side. Now, a lot of space of air freight is being wasted because of their package standards. You know, on the airline pallets, if they can improve a little bit on their, you know, packaging, you know, a lot of, uh, they can save a lot of money in, uh, you know, utilizing that properly. Unfortunately, today, a lot of airlines have started asking for pallet rates and all. They, they are paying much more freight. But if they can look at, you know, their packaging properly and their, you know, Euro pallets, I think a lot of things, they will they'll be able to save a lot of freight. So that's another point that I wanted to give a suggestion over here to the pharma industry, you know. So cool chain is, the, you know. Thing. Thank you, sir. I think it's a very, 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 very valid point. The packaging, because that's what facilitates the movement of goods in a very fast track way and being a forwarder myself i totally accept this fact that yes the packaging uh, as per the pallet sizes of the carrier if if the packaging is taken up in the same way which can optimize those pallets there will be a lot of cost optimization for the customers as well so definitely i'm sure uh, we have a couple of customers here and they will they will note this point uh, mr silvasalam you wanted to say something on this please forward from what you have said on the standards and this is particularly important uh, and this has to be decided by the industry if pharma as an industry together um, uh, pharma um, uh, chamber uh, if the, their industries were to agree on what could be the pellet sizes uh, in respect of uh, transit uh, suppose it is going by train suppose it is going by air and uh, optimize the pellet sizes because um, ultimately, it is not that that one pellet size is required for air, another pellet size for rail, and the third pellet size for uh, um, uh, for uh, uh, road car, for road transport. Because uh, all all the movement is multimodal. You require uh, it has to seamlessly move, and uh, equipment must be available which can handle it in all three modes. And uh, therefore, if my first request is, if pharma industry could um, help. Uh, logistics sector uh, to streamline the pellet sizes and uh, from their side I mean logistics may not declare we may participate in it our logistics uh, experts will be able to provide them advisories that you please adopt this uh, there are as, as you know people like you um, Aditya, Vipin, Tushar they're all there uh, to advise the logistics industry but whatever is the logistics industry's decision will be taken up by the logistics uh, 
um, uh, fraternity to take things forward. So the first requirement is standardization. And we have not been able to get a, um, a fix on this. This is a thing which I think pharma you, um, uh, may, may help logistics to arrive at some sort of a finality. And logistics will take it forward. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, Tusharji, you want to add a quick comment here? I just want to kind of support what sir uh, has said. Uh, we as CSC has set up a forum with the pharma exporters, with the airline and all of us together, basically to do exactly, to figure out how new way we can move pharma and share this knowledge across the industry. Unfortunately, COVID has brought that activity to a standstill. 26 April was our first uh, forum meeting. We have about 13 people and I request all other pharma people who are here to come on that forum. Our idea is to get together and discuss anything what we need to. And it's, it's called a pharma forum. We have an auditorium where they would meet once in a month and each one of us will make a presentation. Glenn Pharma has already worked with the sleeping on uh, the, the pallet to be removed sleep on which increase, reduce the pallet size and goes without the pallet. Such kind of knowledge will be shared. And we are also tying up with the Institute of Packaging. So CSC is tying up with the Institute of Packaging as a, as a, as a project to help pharma shipper to devise different, different packing, which will maximize the space onto the pallets or a container or a brake bulk or anything. So I thought just industry, uh, we are already, we had four, three meetings we had and we were to have a big show on 26 April. But once the lockdown opens, we'll see that. And sir, uh, Swar Salim sir, we'll ask you to come and, you know, address what you are talking now, sir. So God willing, uh, we will take this uh, as a, because sir, I always say, the pharma terminal is like a temple where everybody comes and have to, you know, bow their head. Beat shipper, beat airline, beat forwarder, beat custom broker, or beat us. So we want to make this temple as an hub on activity, anything, everything related to pharma. So I invite everybody to come forward. And we have a 75 people auditorium now, you know, with complete uh, audio video presentation. We want them to come and present their cases. So we are going to make first thing. Uh, do this case study on COVID, how pharma handled. The first presentation will happen upon lockdown, open by us on how pharma handled during COVID time. So lessons learned. So this is what we're going to do. So I thought just to share, since we're all talking about knowledge share. Thank you. Really appreciate, Taji. Uh, really appreciate uh, that you are taking the lead in setting up, especially the, the packaging side of things that you mentioned. And you're collaborating with the customers as well as some uh, specialists of uh, packaging to, to come out with packaging solutions, which will not just be uh, cost optimized for the customers and the carriers, but they will also ensure faster and quicker movement of goods. It's a, it's a very good and a very good. So, uh, Abikram, I just want to come back to you for a second. Uh, uh, like I said, talking about a green corridor, is it something uh, that you you would want, especially on the regulatory side from maybe the ADC or any other thing, which could help the production to move faster to the end consumer? Uh, so creating a green corridor, is there anything of this which could help? Maybe something can be done before and not while the movement of goods is happening uh, from the customer's uh, perspective? I mean, both inwards, uh, where I look at, you know, upward through my supply chain or, you know, uh, downstream through my supply chain, reaching my customers, whether it's exports or whether it's connecting through the domestic channel. I mean, any support from the industry. We talked throughout this, uh, you know, webinar also how government was also reacting and listening to the pain that the industry was going through. A first, you know, uh, giving essential service tax to only the pharmaceutical manufacturer and then all the ancillary suppliers like printers and logistic service providers so it um, you know any any move on that front is a welcome move for us Chaji, you raised your hand to i said uh, you know uh, what has happened today when it comes into the terminal it's all get priority 
it is the priority on the road i would say a pharma truck should have the same priority as an ambulance because understand there is a life inside in that truck if the drug has not reached at the right time to the patient you can lose the patient so i would say on the sir the, on the motor vehicle amendment on the rules the way the far bigger an ambulance has a right to come out on the traffic similar way the trucks carrying pharma you can give them a symbol of red cross or whatever should be allowed to move without uh, any held up at the at the traffic or signals which will bring you know the the moment of pharma faster the the time of uh, you know losing the temperature and all the risk is minimized and drug can come into more secure manner as far as the export is concerned as far as the domestic is concerned we should have a similar principle the pharma drug should have a priority in the traffic moment yeah i think i was hey uh, tushar uh, ji you uh, you know to cover the point that i was going to talk about in terms of uh, you know fast tracking domestic uh, movement and uh, my wish is not only on the outbound uh, side of it even the ingredients or the raw materials which move into the factories i think it should be uh, looked at from both ways because one is definitely we think of the fg and from the plant and making it reach to parts of the country but reverse would also be important whereas we are able to Give a fast track movement of inbound materials which are required for ultimately making these uh, uh, products. So a two way, uh, you know, fast channel in terms of you know ensuring these trucks uh, move, uh, you know, seamlessly in the country. Uh, uh, tolls are passed, state borders are crossed, uh, uh, in uh, you know, uh, without the normal uh, delay that would be faced. The first mile, last mile, uh, uh, as we mentioned, sometimes uh, you know permissions and all uh, get uh, standard for. operating in these places i think these are all uh, so i think uh, uh, the overall channel uh, should be taking care of speed uh, second there should be some bit of collaboration uh, among the you know uh, uh, logistics players along with uh, the pharma companies so that, so that we can bring the most optimum solution because if not one player or two players are able to bring can a combination of two players give something uh, on the table you know uh, so maybe some middle mile is done by someone Uh, cross docking and then the last mile is done by someone else uh, who comes into play when it comes to the warehousing or the 3pl part so i think putting all the blocks together is something important and probably a pharma company is in the best position to be able to uh, 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 do that so i think a collaborative approach uh, you know done so that ultimately it is seamless movement uh, across you know the incapability of one or two players should not hamper ultimately the movement that is something which uh, we should be striving for in this uh, period and you know linking these two three service providers with uh, themselves maybe you know the uh, uh, their systems talking to each other prioritizing pharma uh, movement uh, till the end could be one solution which uh, you know we can think of uh, working to uh thank you thank you ditya for a very strong uh, finishing comment from you and i think the first and last mile uh, as what everybody is saying is is the make or break to everything so be it on the uh, procurement side of the raw material or on the finished product side Uh, on both sides the first and last mile operation will be very critical i love the concept of what uh, tushar ji and you have put across of probably getting a sticker on the truck which carries vaccine which will make uh, which will give priority to that truck or uh, not just uh, on the road but also on the on the tolls and and everywhere because uh, every every passing minute could be critical uh, as tushar ji mentioned that you know there is life inside that truck and we need to get that vaccine to the to the end consumer at the fastest i will i will quickly jump over to a couple of questions i think we've shot off the time a little bit so i will just take a couple of questions here that i see uh, so one of the question that comes in from mr ratnesh is automation can play a key role in managing supply chain with limited availability of trained manpower question to mr tushar and mr rajiv about their plan so i think mr rajiv uh, he means aditya uh, to plans their to embrace digital paperless contactless supply chains so uh, uh, tushar ji anything that you would quickly uh, i would i mean we have short time so i would just request okay, i'll i'll be very brief i'll be very brief thank you and the automation is a very capital intensive and it may not result the best uh, efficiency as per the indian environment is concerned as you we have to have a create a fusion and the industry is already using automation because we can't have robots 
we can't have uh, people uh, uh, eliminating people because we are people oriented economy so industry will move forward on both together side by side Thank you. Are they you? Yeah, correct. I think see, uh, uh, as rightly said, that we uh, we have a large uh, you know force of people uh, that uh, ultimately have to be deployed or employed in the country. So uh, obviously, it doesn't uh, mean that uh, you know automation gets uh, you know a backseat because ultimately these are uh, matters of efficiency. So I think every player uh, in this uh, scale would be doing their bit to uh, you know uh, uh, use technology. I think uh, the basics or uh, you know the hygiene level of uh, uh, technology is already there in most of the players, whether it's a, a system or an ERP or API linkage with the you know customers or uh, you know GPS enabled uh, trucks. Now I think point is how how further do we go? Whether you know we automate the warehouses, we don't have you know we use uh, uh, you know automated uh, uh, you know. Uh, uh, forklifts and uh, you know we use AI and uh, all those technologies. They have their use. Obviously, they have their uh, use, but it's not uh, that uh, you know ultimately a large sum, so large sum that it, there is no ROI visible to it can be uh, deployed in uh, this kind. Um, ultimately, India still is a very competitive. Uh, uh, you know, their logistics is still a very competitive industry. So there is there are uses, but they will have to be done in stages. Uh, as in, uh, as in when the uh, you know maturity of the industry uh, goes forward. So there is basic basic amount of uh, technology which I think most of the players are using. Thank you, Ditya. Uh, I have one more uh, last question that I will take up here, and I would request Mr. Silva Salam and probably Vikram to take uh, uh, a take on that. It is uh, the gentleman's uh, Mr. Rajat Gupta. He asked, "I'd like to understand how home delivery of pharma and e-commerce is going to create an opportunity for logistics service providers." Uh, I guess he's also probably in some way trying to talk about the e-pharmacy. So I, I would just request uh, Mr. Silva Salam and uh, Vikram's uh, thoughts on these on this topic, please. I'm not getting into the regulatory aspects. I will assume that uh, e-pharmacy will uh, will actually uh, comply with a whole lot of regulatory requirements. So I take that as a given. Uh, and once we say that uh, um, uh, we we address regulatory requirements, which means that the uh, that the drugs which are offered uh, is actually issued by a by a doctor uh, who has seen the patient or is expected to see the patients. All that regulatory requirements, I am assuming. Once you do that, it just becomes a matter of uh, a delivery. The problem comes is uh, in uh, in India the the the, the problem is um, uh, if uh, uh, we are not following the discipline. Uh, E-pharmacy on several occasions I have been health secretary myself. The problem with e-pharmacy is is that people are uh, um, uh, proposing to give uh, drugs which has to be prescribed drugs. But once the e-pharmacy as an industry, and uh, this is where the pharmaceutical industry will help, and uh, if necessary, it should be based on a pharma portal, and then your e-pharmacy is on. According to me, it's a it's a it's a it's a concept whose time is overdue, and if at all it has not taken shape in India, where when it should have, um, uh, it is only because of the fact that we have not been very clear about the regulatory practices and the self-discipline which we will put into being. And once that happens, it's true. For example, I can get a vaccine for myself. Uh, if, if, if it's an oral uh, vaccine or a polio drop, I can get it on a cold chain to my home. There's nothing which prevents it uh, from getting. But as long as we have that, uh, we, it shouldn't so happen that something like diclofenac starts getting uh, uh, into people's homes over a, over a counter. And there, and that's where the problem is. If the if here the requirement, as I would put it, is uh, is a portal, which is supported by the industry, and once it is supported by the industry, uh, I don't have a problem at all. I can order any drug sitting at home. Uh, the and I, I know if if uh, a lead time to my place is going to be four days, I can always wait out those four days because the courier group is aware and available to supply me that medicine. So I think the whole problem is, in, is not uh, that the industry is not ready, the concept is not ready, 
or the supply chain system is not ready. It's because our regulatory practices, I don't say regulation, I say regulatory practices which we adopt are not compliant with the regulatory requirement or the law. Once we ensure that, we are on and we are in business. I wish it happens. I'm one of its biggest uh, advocates, but I'm not being able to. I think the consensus needs to be created by the pharma guys, the pharma portal, and then you can have any number of uh, e-pharmacies. Even a fellow who is uh, the pharmacy situated in my um, uh, in my uh, uh, pin code can be a, a, a e-pharmacy and he can take e-orders. And he can order it from the from the pharma to say, I've got an order, please supply it. And this is the doctor who has prescribed it. Uh, <laughs> once we have the transparency, and that's where I think the previous question also comes, automation. We may need, we may not have factory automation, but we can have automation of business processes. And that we need to have in much more greater uh, than what it is available today. Today, I really do not know how do I make a how do I make a booking. I need to have that uh, on uh, on my on my table so that a lot of multimodal logistics players will be in a position to part participate and provide value for money. I hope I have answered the question in its full perspective. Absolutely, thank Mr. Silvasilam. I would like to thank all of the panelists here. I think you have been absolutely awesome. Uh, the information flow on this panel has been extremely knowledgeable even to myself. Uh, I have picked up some very good points and I think there's a lot of learning of the last 50 days and the new Vista ahead uh, is going to uh, for sure be a much better phase of not just the pharma logistics but all the other uh, logistics requirements of the world. Right from the raw material procurement to the movement through the airports on the land on the rail, I think the the word that Mr. Silva Salam used is so apt of cooperative competition. We all need to coexist together. We need to create enough facilities uh, which with which the movement of goods can uh, seamlessly move from the producer to the actual person who's affected with it. And uh, with lots of new ways that we've seen in the last 50 days, the world ahead looks to be a better place. Uh, I wish uh, uh, my, my lovely panel a uh, 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 gratitude from my side and also from Logistics Insider. Uh, thank you to Logistics Insider team also for setting this up. Uh, it was a pleasure for me to moderate this session. I hope uh, our audience around the world uh, also benefited from it. Please feel free to re send out your comments to the Logistics Insider team who will share it with everybody. I wish everybody very safe and healthy days ahead. Thank you very much. All the very best. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Yash. Thank you. Be safe. Thank you very much, sir.